Hello folks, my name is Fred, welcome to my shop. Something a little different today, usually I'm hobby machining in, in the shop, but uh, today I'm working on an electric go-kart engine, motors, for uh, our nine-year-old granddaughter, making an electric go-kart for her. thought I'd share with you what I've done, because there's actually so little information out on the web. Uh, I'll go over the components first. Uh, 12 volt storage battery, nothing special here. It's currently just a starting battery. It's not a deep cycle. If this works, we will be converting it over to a deep cycle. This is a voltmeter slash amp meter. Allows me to monitor battery voltage, system voltage, and the current draw from the, the motor and the controller. This is a 300 amp breaker, DC, an ignition and control switch. This is a 250 amp, 12 volt, I'm sorry, 120 amp, 12 volt DC relay. This is the DC motor controller. This is a purchased item, capable of a continuous run at 200 amps and uh, intermittent run at, at uh, 250. Over here is the power unit. This is a, a three horsepower DC series wound motor and I've got it uh, mounted on a, an L bracket and a gear reducing uh, three and a half to one ratio here to slow it down and provide more torque and this is the homemade uh, throttle controller that, that uh, sends the signal via this little gray cable over to the motor controller the gas pedal will be hooked up to this and you can see it working this is a potentiometer a linear potentiometer in that it does not it's not a circle but in one plane back and forth with some return springs so how does it work? Okay, the negative, let's start with the easy one first, it comes out of the negative side, goes through the, the meter, straight through the cable here, into the charge controller, straight through the charge controller, and then up to the, the negative side of the motor, negative. This little black tape denotes negative. Now the positive side comes out the positive, again goes through the meter, goes through a 300 amp breaker. This is in case of a catastrophic short down line, it'll pop this breaker. Goes through the 12 volt relay, again around into the motor controller, and this is where the DC voltage is, is is modulated uh, and then the output is via this positive lead here up again to the motor so what's the ignition switch in in the fuse etc well there's a capacitor bank in the motor controller and it has to be charged uh, before you before the motor controller can operate and the inrush current on a set of capacitors is almost like a dead short. So what I did to overcome that is I put a, two, a three position switch. This is off where nothing is going through. And when I turn it to the first position, it closes a set of contacts that allows current from the battery to go through this little, this little fuse, through the switch and out this blue wire to this light bulb, through the blue wire, bypassing the relay, it's on the hot side or the the controlled side of the, the relay, up into the motor. And when I turn it on, you'll see the light bulb go bright and then dim, thusly. What that's doing is charging the capacitor bank. Now that the capacitor bank is charged, we can go to the run position. And what the run position does is it takes this 
circuit out of play and puts this one in play. And what this does is the control lead for this relay. 12 volts goes to this relay and energizes it. The other side goes to ground to complete the circuit. So if you listen, you can, besides the key click, you could hear the relay engage. So now we have, it's tough to read. Um, 13.6 volts with very low 5 watts. Uh, maybe I can put this up. And it's a little better. So now the circuit's charged, and all we need to do to engage the motor is pull on this this throttle simulating the pedal it lowers the resistance that goes to the motor controller and the speed of the motor is proportional to the distance traveled by this potentiometer. We'll do it again. It just starts, just rolling. Now there's not a lot of torque at the low end, but as you get higher, point it was drawn 22 amps of course that's with no load in a DC motor the when the load goes up the current goes up proportionally I have a lot of assembly left to do on this unit but uh, laid it out in this breadboard fashion so I could debug it but actually I put it all together and it it worked first time uh, the motor controller is heat synced and I, I put it in this box is heat synced has a cover that goes over it it's not watertight but it's not even waterproof but you know who wants to be riding a an electric go-kart in the wet right and uh, this has a, a top for it with four screws so that's it right now that's as far as I've gotten thought I'd share this with you because there really is so little information on the internet Hope you found this useful if you're thinking of building a, uh, an electric vehicle. Uh, as I proceed with the build, I will give updates and uh, let you know how I made out. So thanks for watching and uh, we'll catch you on the next, next build part. Bye.